Hey everyone, I am Parth Thuru, Event Program Manager for Microsoft Reactor India. And yes, welcome you all to our another show of MVP Connect. But before we begin, let's go through our code of conduct. We are all here to learn together. So please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of differences, being kind, and consider it in a way you all engage. Yes, obviously, we do encourage you all to participate. Please drop all your questions in the chat section, and we'll pick it from there. So now, let me bring in a speaker for today's session. So, Ayanar, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. So, Ayanar, uh, for our MVP Connect today, what do we have? Today, we are going to talk about uh, what inference played a role in a large language model, example, ChatGPT or Dolly. So, what is very, the inference is very important. We are going to have some demo on uh, Triton inference in Azure ML. Oh, sounds exciting. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Okay. Thanks everyone for joining uh, on today's Reactor and first thanks to the Reactor team for this opportunity. Today we are going to talk about uh, what is inference and why inference is very important and why are we talking about inf so much about the inference now. <clears throat> so let me start talking about, let me start with, talk about, about me. And uh, I started my career 17 years back in HCL Info System. Uh, currently, I have more than 18 years of experience. And I worked as a middleware engineer, infrastructure architect, uh, DevOps lead, as well as data platform engineer before. So I have around 50 plus technical certification in AWS Azure IBM Cloud. And I'm a TOGAF level two certified. Okay. I have, I'm passionate about learning new things and at the same time, share, the, share it with the tech community. And you can connect with me on the LinkedIn. I'm very active on the LinkedIn. Thank you. So <clears throat> let's start with the machine learning lifecycle. Yeah, we are going to talk about inference more about it. But before uh, that, we let's start with the machine learning lifecycle. So it is easy to follow along where the inference plays a role. So there are two stages. One is training stage, and then is an inference stage in a machine learning, if you talk about it at the high level. In a training phase, you will it will cover all the iteration of what is a problem statement you want to solve in a machine learning and what is the value you want to <clears throat> bring out of the machine learning or the AI and whether is it a real machine learning problem or not. Then you create, a, you gather the required data. Let's say if you want to create some image analysis of uh, people wearing helmet or not wearing a helmet, so you will gather all the data related to the pe people going in a bike with a helmet without help at. And you will label it whether yes or no. I'm giving an example. Then we will create, a, uh, explore the data and get a, we get a baseline accuracy. If somebody is wearing a cap, it should not confuse with the helmet. Okay. So some kind of uh, baseline accuracy you need to give. Then you create a build a model. Okay. So before building the model, you will identify which model to be used, okay? Are we going to build from the scratch or we can use a pre-trained model <clears throat> provided by Microsoft for the image like a ResNet or DenseNet for image analysis. Then we will train with the trained data. Then we will evaluate model with the test data. Sorry. <laughs> Then after that, we will expose this data to the uh, real time, whether the expected prediction is working or not. And this is about the training phase. Let's come to the inference phase, which is very important, um, where whether the model which you deployed, it's a batch processing, uh, unlike the real time UR or REST API, you are exposing your model, whether it can be a batch processing or it need to be real-time inference. If it is a real-time inference, how are we going to be hosting this 
whether the model, <clears throat> whether the throughput is very important, whether the accuracy is very important, all and all those monitoring metrics has to be collected. Uh, and the real time data, whenever there's a new data comes, the source, those data has to be collected and retained with those data also. So this is a high level machine learning life cycle. Um, now we are going to more focus on the inference, okay. And since uh, I, this is a second session we are making, first session we made out of Azure machine learning uh, ML ops. And the second, now we are going to be talk about the inference. Okay, so the core MLOps capability is uh, the high level is four categories. One is model serving. That's what we are going to be talk about more, and the model registry, online experimentation, and the machine learning, metadata, and artifact repository we have discussed in the previous session. Okay, so let's talk about the inference more in detail now. Okay, and. In the inference, we have a we already built a model, and we are exposing the model as a API or as in a program um, so that it can be consumed. There are high level four different uh, inference. One is online inference, which we really used to it. So anytime in uh, take an example of the chat GPT, which everybody used to now. So when you giving a prompt or the instruction to the chat GPT and it is giving you the, uh, uh, and if it is giving you the information back and with, and behind that, whenever it is making a real time inference, okay, there is a model who should be behind and where it making a real time inference. Uh, so that is online inference, okay. And then streaming inference, okay. So there will be a event processing. Um, you will have a pipeline where it will be triggered uh, based on some event. And based on that event, you need to create, you need to predict the inference. It can be a SQL, a real time in inference as a SQL, or it can be your machine learning model be built, can be called as a, a API. It can be a streaming inference. Then offline batch inference, that is sometime, <clears throat> Let's take an example. You want to uh, you build a, a lot of images are there. You build a model, okay? But you just want to check uh, whether that image is what is the uh, whether the people wearing helmet or not. Yes or no? Just a prediction and store it as an offline. Uh, so that is the offline batches. There is no real time um, call, okay? So you can run as a backend as a batch process, okay? Then embed inference, it mostly run at the edge device. Okay, so some search or something embed inferences, uh, it mostly worked at the uh, uh, at the edge devices. Okay, why are we talking about uh, so much talk about inference now? We can see there is already a big traction is happening on the generative AI space where they'll take an example of large language model or the image generations. Okay, so a lot of people plan to use those model for their real use cases at the production level. And when it comes to the production, the throughput is very much important and high throughput is very important and the load latency is very important so defining your inference infrastructure is very much important for the uh you, whatever the product you are building for the generative ai so take an example of gpt3 or uh, bert or biobert bio gpt <clears throat> it's at an nlp space okay so where whenever you're hosting the model you we need to define uh, what kind of throughput you needed, okay? So that's where uh, the model, currently, if you really want to build a product, you are no more going to build a model from the scratch. We already have a predefined, the pre, uh, pre-trained model, or you already have a GPT model, uh, GPT-J or open source model, where you need to just fine tune it and host it, uh, fine tune with your own data and host it, okay? 
And the moment you host and build a product on top of it, anybody using the product, they really look forward for the high throughput and low latency. <clears throat> and there will be a cases where you will have a multimodal. Take an example of ChatGPT4. It is a multimodal. So it will, you have image as well as a text combined. So not all the language model will <clears throat> uh, work well with the uh, images also. So you will have a multimodal at the back end. So for, in order to handle the multimodal, your inference need to be uh, host, uh, you need to be powerful enough to host the multimodal, okay? At the same where we discussed about the NLP, let's come to the lang uh, computer image or computer vision, okay? Take an example of image classification or object detection or segmentation or take an, say, example of a diffusion, stable diffusion model, okay? So, uh, which is gen using a gen data. You take a two big companies, currently a lot of connection is happening in, in the market, like a mid-journey or the runway where they are, making a videos out of uh, uh, out of the <clears throat> instruction okay they, so these are all the models which need a lot of uh, high scalable inference infrastructure okay and as the last point i want to discuss is uh, we have a lot of foundation models by, by multiple open source as well as uh, uh, open ai okay where we can build on top of it with the fine tune option okay to build a product for us but we if you are hosting in your infrastructure or you are hosting in the cloud you need to know where to host it how to host it that's what we are going to discuss about now okay before going there let me explain my challenges i faced in my uh, assignments previous assignment the data scientists <clears throat> they really love to build the uh models okay and they built a model previously on the local then we told why don't you use the azure machine learning workspace they're happily using workspace then there is a challenge now our model is ready where can we host it then what we did we did a hosting the model in the container instance okay it's a single model then there will be a challenge comes to us like guys we are building a multi-model how are we hosted okay then we were discussing about a scalable manner uh, azure container instances uh it comes with auto scaling but we want to host along with our application okay so we were building uh we were deployed on the azure kubernetes service okay but it made a lot of challenges okay at the same time, we have different uh, uh, data science engineer using a different framework, okay? Somebody is very good in PyTorch, they want to build their model on the PyTorch. And somebody says, uh, you know what, this model built on TensorFlow, I just want to use this pre trained model, we want to use a TensorFlow, okay? And a lot of uh, uh, challenges comes when a lot of data scientists uh, catching up with the industry and build that uh, model with a different framework. It will become a challenge for the MLOps engineer to ho uh, generalize and host it under the under the common platform, okay? And also the legacy models, okay? We have a models which we running as a Python Flask application, which we want to uh, standardize, okay? Then comes the latency throughput as well as monitoring the <clears throat> models, okay? So I take an example of a name entity recognition model, which built okay, by one of our data scientists. So the challenge is any application calling with a payload, they want that information immediately. They don't want to uh, wait for uh, say one minute, okay? Their expectation latency is less than 10 milliseconds. So, so we want to find the infrastructure which host this inference in a scalable manner, okay? And also there are different compute options. Some people want to work in a CPU, sometimes you want to do it in a GPU, then the cost involved and uh, the business value versus cost we will be discussed, okay? So there are a lot of challenges uh, uh, when come to the hosting the model, after building the model, when hosting the model, these are the challenges. The high level I would say is framework, 
and the deployment option whether it's a single model or multi-model or it can well, which cloud provider we are going to use and whether it is going to be cpu or gpu we were finding a common framework which we can use uh, will scale to our requirement okay that's where uh, we come to know about the triton server this is from the nvidia so the good thing about the triton server right so you can use any kind of uh, framework you can use the pytorch or tensorflow or onnx okay um and it can be running on top of a cpu also gpu also and it, it do the multiple requests can be handled it in efficient manner and you can build as in a microservices where you can make a call between the microservices as a grpc or you can expose as an arrest in, in point say it will come up with the port 8001 so where you can make a call and with your payload and connect it <clears throat> and we were testing with a small model to move this to the triton inference and we got 15 x 15 x of uh, improvement okay uh, yes we deployed on uh, the gpu but previously also we were running on the gpu and after we deploying the same model in uh, azure uh, kind of azure azure endpoint with backed by the gpu we really got a 10x performance okay so that is the power of the triton in uh, server we will go a little bit more understanding of what kind of benefits that Triton server provides. <clears throat> yes, it supports multiple framework and uh, you can uh, use a TensorFlow and uh, ONNX, as I said, PyTorch.script. And they also have a framework of Rapids, uh, uh, which is again by the uh, uh, NVIDIA. And open we know is a uh, model format from the uh, Intel, okay. So multi-model, okay. So you can have a multiple model package as a single application and send it. So there is a standard structure need to be followed under the folder. You can have models under that model. You will have a, a model one, model two, model three under that model. So there's a structure need to be followed. We will go and discuss, we, we cannot go see those things. And we can call it as an ensemble models, or you can have a call as a multi-model. Sometimes you will expose only one model. There will be a pre-processing logic needed, which sometimes takes so much of time. Okay, um, and some and then very important thing is sometimes the model people prefer to do the pre-processing on the CPU and the inference on the uh, GPU. Those can also be done on the Triton server config. Okay. Then concurrent model execution. Okay, so you when building execution of the model, we mostly deployed under the single GPU. Okay, and we started working better when we have multiple GPU. Um, but the Triton server abstract that on handle the request in the multiple execution and spread across a different GPU. Okay, you no need to create any management on, on top of it. Okay. Then the dynamic patching, that is a, another interesting feature. Okay, so you can have, a, you can uh, define on how much request it need to make, okay. Whether it need to be eight requests to be processed or 10 requests process for that particular uh, model, all those things you can uh, define in your Triton config, okay. These are the four important benefits we have gone through. That it's really good, uh, you can, there are multiple, benefits on it okay so these are the four important benefits we have uh, achieved out of it okay then comes uh the model pipeline so this is a uh, example i so you can take an example you can have a more same uh inference based on you can upload the image the image will be pre-processed that will be model and you will have a classification model also you will have a segmentation model so this is the model ensemble i'm talking about okay then it comes to the nlp side the same there will be a language detection 
it can convert the french to english also at the same time you can convert the uh, the to the german to english also the multiple <coughs> we we will going to talk about this one based on your language detection and then process and uh, translate the text you can have a multiple languages also okay and you can process this in a uh, end points okay if it is a detect as a language uh, this particular language it will translate and pro post process it okay so and then you will have a looping exception it's a feedback so whenever there is an input okay there will be auto regressive model where you can check on the condition and it can execute back to the uh, input okay and you can run this on the gpu on cpu also and you can define in the triton config we will have some example to see about it okay now comes to the real use case okay so microsoft is using nvidia gpu and triton infra uh, server to deploy their z code model uh for this is a if anybody use a cognitive service from the microsoft uh translate that is you at the back end is using uh, the nvidia gpu plus triton inference server okay and previously they were hosted not on not on the triton server inference but they face a lot of challenges to improve the efficiency and the throughput uh they uh, built a new model called z code and it it worked well with the triton inference server okay so if anybody want to int uh, anybody interested to more about the z code you can check on this uh, link i am uh, given down okay it it, it use a uh, some it, it, the advantages of this uh, z code is even if you have a less training data it give you the better uh, say better output okay so underrepresented language let's say if we have some they give an example of hiati okay if you go to the use case you can see the there is a disaster happen on the hiati and they want to communicate to the hiati people and their language translation was done better using a microsoft translate uh <clears throat> which really help them over okay so uh either uh, z code is using the underrepresentative language also and give a better uh, uh translated data okay and it is hosted on the inference server uh, triton inference server so we were talking about uh, triton inference server so much okay but how it is built okay and is it very tough to do the deployment no it is very simple uh, we will go through this example okay i first go to this uh, triton inference uh, github page it is open source uh, currently they are running on a uh, version 22 um, but if this is not you can build your container also it's very simple you have to use the triton server image okay and uh, inside your container and you have to structure your model accordingly we will go through this information so okay in if you are using any cloud pro if you are using microsoft you no need to even do this one microsoft is already supported with this one and you can see the container uh, gpu container registry here uh, the nvidia gpt uh, what is the latest version of the uh, triton inference server we are using you can check it from here okay. what model is supported by a triton okay it's not like all the model is supported uh you will see all the computer vision model uh which is supported which language framework it is developed okay whether it is supported with the uh, multi cpu or not again very important whether it is multi node supported or not if you want to have a distributed uh training or distributed inference whether how it supported okay so or you can see whether the triton supported or not okay you can see all those things here 
the reason I given you an example is we were uh, people were using our data scientists is using some model which is not supported by Triton. Then it became a challenge. So we always ask them to refer here and see which pre-trained model they can use it before they building the uh, machine learning model. Okay, now let's do some demo on it. Okay, so uh, there are two examples. I'm going to deploy a model, build a model. I'm going to deploy the model which is already there in Azure. Uh, and we are going to check for the uh, inference using a Triton, okay? So there are two steps involved. I am already in the, I already done the demo because sometimes it takes so much time to execute. So I already done the demo, but I'll walk through it, uh, the steps. So I am downloading the GitHub uh, from Azure ML samples. So I will say mkvm demo, go to demo, and uh, git clone this. This is Azure examples. You can use it. I'm reusing the sample code. And I also give you some sample code I built for I'm giving you a skeleton, which I used in our infrastructure uh, without sharing the proprietary content. Okay. Okay, come on, let's do it okay. So, okay, so in Azure example, you go to Azure example and go to CLI and inside that endpoint, inside the endpoint you have online. We are going to test on online trends. Okay, and you have a Triton. Right here we are going to use a single model. So here, first, what we have to do is we have to create the endpoint. So I already created the endpoint. Okay, and for creating the endpoint, this is a command line you need to use. Okay, AZ ML online create and online endpoint create. Triton reactor, this is my namespace, and uh, this is the endpoint file I'm using. I'm currently executing all those things in Azure ML workspace, so I no need to give uh, as the subscription information, all this information, so this is what I'm using. So what, that's, what it happened is it created an endpoint. Once I run this command, it created the endpoint. Okay, and let us go and see what is there in that particular file. Cat create endpoint. So it is using the schema structure of uh, managed endpoint and it giving a name and the auth mode is ML token. So it is just creating an endpoint. Okay, then I'm creating a deployment. This is where we are keeping that information about our image, all those information. <clears throat> so it is using this particular file to create it, okay? Clearing the screen. Cat create manage deployment.yaml file. So it is name is blue and it is telling the my endpoint and giving you the model. I will show you the model path and it is using a DSNES, DSNET and it is the model format. It's an ONX, okay, just naming convention, but we will check on it. The type, all you need to define is you just need to tell that model called Triton model. What will happen in the backend, right? The moment you say Triton model, it will go and fetch that Triton image because already this image will be in uh, ACR repository. So it will be using those uh, image uh, those image to deploy your model. Okay, you will see this one. So under the models, you see the structure under the models, you will have a model one. If you have only one model, you will have one model. This is a naming convention which you need to strictly follow if you want to host a multiple model, you need to have something called model and scope. Here it is a version. So this is a version we are using. The model is the ONNX model, okay? And it is, we are using a, a distant model. 
So that's it. Okay. Once I run this command of uh, online deployment, create name blue uh, reactor demo on my particular one. So it created the deployment. If I go to the model, first it will register the model. This is the INNX model. And you can see it is uh, <clears throat> uh, taking the model version. It is uh, under this particular path. The version is one. Okay, and you can check other information. Okay, so the Triton, this is a type very much important. The type is uh, Triton. Okay, so artifacts, you can see inside the modifact, it will the model uh, is under that particular structure. If you have one more model, you will have model two under this one. Okay, <clears throat> that's it. Okay, I created the and it is deployed under the Triton demo. Okay, so if you go to that demo, click on it. So you, we were deployed under that particular uh, model and the environment is auto-generated. You are not created. If you are creating a, uh, any other model, you need to create a scoring and you need to create your own environment, Python environment, okay? Here it is completely auto-created and it is very simple, okay? Okay, then comes to the deployment logs, okay? So it will, Pull the particular image. It is currently in the, the I think it is the Triton. It automatically initializes. It will understand it is the INX uh, runtime it is using. I'm using a, a DSP3. I'm not using any GPU because it's expensive. I'm using that for, okay. And uh, yeah, that's all the deployment. You no need to do anything, okay. The batch size, which I'm talking about, the Ford is the maximum batch size. Okay, the moment the model is deployed, we can test the inference. You see the port, okay, the gRPC is 8001. If you want to connect with a gRPC or some microservices, and if you're using HTTP, it will be as a 8000, okay. But we are currently masked because we are deployed under the managed endpoint, okay. So let's consume. How are we going to consume? We may end up in having our REST endpoint and we'll have authentication token, okay. So what I did is I create, I download, this is just a uh, image and it just give you the information about the image. <clears throat> I downloaded some images and I am trying to uh, do the uh, prediction whether the images is correct or not, okay? I will show you those images also for you. Again, I want to go to the right path. So I keep it here. So here there is a Python script which is nothing but it will call the particular uh, uh, API <coughs> based on our endpoint URL and it do the prediction, okay? So let's just check this file also before doing this. Okay, for the model name and it do the prediction. And it is it is using again a client of uh, a Triton HTTP client, okay? So let's run this. I'm having an image under that particular data path. So it is predicting as a peacock, okay? I'm giving you the image. I will show you those images also. <clears throat> so these are the images. So I don't have peacock, but I have something called uh, uh, Scarlet Macau. So you see, this is an image. So let's predict what is predicting. I'm giving you the Scarlet Macau JPG file. Okay, let's give this information. This is the image I uploaded. See, the prediction is Macau. Uh, let's give something like uh, some fish. I'm giving you some fish and see what it is predicting. 
Okay, it says a rock beauty. I don't know what is this. Uh, I'll show you this image. So fish water animal, this is what I'm using. Okay, it taken this image and uh, it giving you the output of uh, a rock beauty, which is that image, which is a fish, uh, a fish name. Okay, rock beauty. I checked on the internet also. What is this image? Okay, rock beauty, and it predicted this. Okay, so this is how the power. And you see the throughput, right? I went and checked the throughput after deploying the model. I was monitoring. Uh, what is the latency? Okay, you can have multiple images also. You see, the maximum <coughs> latency is uh, twenty sec. 20 milliseconds, okay, and if sometimes it may have, see? and for other models, it started giving you better throughput, okay. So that is about deploying a single model, okay. And uh, let me share my experience about how I deployed the multi model. I give you the skeleton alone, I'm not going deep into this. So, what happened? We have a model which is under. <coughs> We have model under the TensorFlow as well as people developed on a PyTorch and converted into the ONNX. Okay. Uh, and how we deployed is uh, we install all the libraries. You can see this. And this is what I, I want to explain. Okay. So this is a Triton config. And I'm deploying under the Kubernetes, as I explained, okay, under the namespace I, and, oh, I've, and whether it is a GPU, G, and it, we given a, it's running on a GPU. <clears throat> And this is the model we are talking about here. This is the model one and it's a model two. And here the model type is TensorFlow. Here the model type is ONNX, okay. And the batch size here, it will process a 16 and it can process a eight, okay. So this is a Triton config we were using uh, to deploy our multi-model. Of course, after that, we deploy that uh, as an endpoint, uh, as an uh, under the AKS inference. And you can see we were deploying a multi-model, uh, model one and model two, okay? And we this is a sample way of testing it. Uh, we are testing from the microservices so I'm giving you the, uh, the gRPC information, but if you're testing from the client, you have to use 8,000 port to do the testing. So uh, it's, this is about single model deployment. This is a multi-model deployment, okay? That's all guys, okay, so anybody, uh, uh, that's all I want to present, okay. So the reason which I take on this topic is since a lot of uh, a large language model is coming into the picture, people are building it and want to uh, fine tune with their own data and host the in, under the inference. So maybe this will be really helpful, okay. And a lot of other interesting uh, um, uh, NVIDIA framework, which works closely with the Microsoft, you can always uh, go back to this link. It will give you the, the particular one is first, tra first transformer. Uh, you can read more about it if you are interested. Okay. So that's all I want to share. Uh, any question, guys? Uh, I'm happy to take your questions. Okay. okay. Um, but I can see some questions. Kevin, hi, sir. Can I know the content today relevant to the A exam? Uh, no, only content. If I would have closely told, I have talked about, I spoke about the AWS, uh, sorry, Azure Translate, uh, which is, uh, which you will get a lot of questions in your A900 exam if you're talking about the A exam. It's not related to the content. Can you explain how to connect model and endpoint? Okay. Okay, endpoint is on the, uh, thanks Mark for your question, okay. Uh, the endpoint is from the, uh, here you see, right? If it's, we are defining a plain vanilla endpoint. We are using, we are not using AKS uh, uh, endpoint, we are using Azure managed endpoint. You can see this one. And the deployment where you are host, you are connecting your model information. So I will go to that particular file, which will, give you those information for you. So here, I'm going to put a caps. So 
this is where it will come to the model. Okay, so there is a folder structure. The folder structure is very important. That's what I was telling. In our environment, we have models. Under that models, we have model hyphen one. Okay, here you go to the model. This is the ONX model, so you can easily see it. Okay, under the models, under the model underscore one. This is where. Okay, it, you just need to give a models as a folder structure. It automatically understand. Okay, and it, this is a version. If you have multiple version, you keep a multiple version here. Okay. And you don't need to create a score, uh, scoring script and all it automatically. Pay. This is the ONNX model. It's a dense net. Okay. Thank you. Any questions? I'll wait for a few minutes. Feel free to put it on the comments on the uh, here as well as on the link. I'm happy to take if I find very interesting. I'm happy to share my experience on that particular part. Okay. Hope it's it would have been useful. You can directly hey, apply uh, on it. Okay. Hey, can you share few? Can you share few learning links for uh, today's session? If you share it in the studio chat, I can yeah, post okay. it uh, here. I'll put this PDF file in this link. Okay, and this is a. GitHub link I created for it. Okay. <coughs> you use them. So <laughs> I work in a multi cloud, so I got confused always. Sorry for it. Okay. So I'll put it under the command. So here with the path. Okay. I'll keep uh, this presentation also there, and you will have all the useful links from there. Okay. I not put up the presentation still now, but I will put up a right. Okay. Okay. And I, what are the snippet I have, right? So it will be useful. Okay. It's nothing. I want to be very careful. I'm not using any. Uh, yeah, I'm not using anything. Okay. <clears throat> okay. This auth alone, I will defunct it. Okay. Add your auth. Okay. So I will. I'll add this comment also there. Okay. So it will be useful. Okay, I am seeing few more commands. Let me take those commands also. Okay, share the link, please. Okay, uh, please, Mark, please check a little bit after a uh, half an hour. I'll upload those information. Okay. <laughs> so, guys, you can even so connect Ayanar on his uh, LinkedIn. If you have many more questions. Yes. Kevin, if you are want to prepare for AA exam also, reach out to me. I am A exam certified, A90, 900 plus 102 I certified. I can share my experience also. Any questions, folks? A final call to ask the questions. So I think we are good, INR. Let's call for a wrap. Thank you. Thanks, the team. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Path, for opportunity. Thanks, Tim. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Have everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us today. And please enjoy the rest of your day.